Hi YouTube. My uh, last attempt on making a sulky sucked. It was horrible. My back freaking hurt for like two weeks after I made it. I blew out the tire because of the fact that that sulky sucked so bad. But I made this one. It's the same thing. I just welded all of this so it does not twist here. Cut the bar, welded that, put that on top of that, ran a screw through one of these, which I cut in half, welded it to a pair of piece of angle iron. But unfortunately, when I was running that hole through there, I hit the belt. So, if you have a piece of angle iron that's about a foot and a half wide, two feet long, probably better off than putting the screws more towards the end if you're running it on an older ransom bobcat like this. My model number is XM3652. It's old. It's probably close to 30 years old, but this thing was sweet. Cut it in half, welded it on there, and obviously it pivots up and down. The only problem that I have with this is I'm too damn tall. So when I'm standing on it, because it has so much ground clearance, if you're like, I don't know, 5'5", five, 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 eight tops, it'd be fine for you. But as you can see, it just twists there. And I didn't tighten down the main bolt on this because obviously it's not going to unscrew. And that gives it a little bit more flex. And if I need to spin it sideways and carry it, it's easier to pick it up. But here's the underside. And it helps to do that. So that's the John Deere tractor front end with a Craftsman tire and rim on this side with no spacer in it, so it's wobbly. Some bed frame angle iron that I just kind of ran a couple welds. That's probably the nicest weld there because I cleaned that steel the best. Welded on the inside here, which you can't probably see because it's freaking dark as shit. Welded on the inside there, welded there, welded there, welded the whole L there. Same on this side, and welded the outside. That's just to keep this plate from doing anything. And I just tried it because I just finished it about 20 minutes ago. And I think it's about 12.30. Now, all I have to do is make a snow plow attachment for it and some type of chain set up for the tires for the winter. So I have a plow here. That's about a 28 inch plow. It's off a of Crossman something. <coughs> and that's about the size of that. So that's an actual functioning homemade sulky. Only problem is, I'm too tall. Wasn't really thinking about that. So I might cut this here off and cut this off here. Well, cut this off here and put a block on each side here to lower it to the ground and then reweld the wheels there. Because I really don't feel like buying one, even though I kind of just sight to stored one for Walmart. But I still need my mower until then, so I finished building this. <clears throat> it's for sale for, I probably got like $50 worth of crap into it between welding wire and hardware. <clears throat> so it's probably what I want, like 50 60 bucks. It works. 
I'm just too damn tall. And this is my next project. Taking this blown up metro that I found on the side of the street in Bristol. Putting that Craftsman electric start on it. 20.5 horsepower. Turbo cool, whatever the fuck that means. And probably gonna make another sulky over there. I got another tractor front end. That one might actually have suspension, so to speak, depending on how I go about building it. Because I left the bracket on the front end. And I might leave it high for those certain yards that you go through. Leave it high and wide. Weld a bar here so the wheel stair. Well, put a bar there so the wheel still stair. And run a straight bar off the front of this and this. And also down. That I'm going to put the platform down here. Right about rim height. So if the tire goes flat, it doesn't really impede the whole moving factor of it. And that's the exhaust pipe I gotta modify to put that mower and motor on that mower there. And I have this sweet mower here that I actually converted into electric start with the Bobcat motor. I'll actually show you this one running. Put it in neutral. My tire keeps on going flat, so I don't really use it so much anymore. Got like a fucking tick crawling on my back or some shit. figure that one out. This thing's sweet. We're doing the job anyways. I did that about three weeks ago when I blew the original motor. That's some old thing and I was gonna take the motor off that but the shaft size is the diameter on the shaft is just way too small. I feel like screwing with it. So, another project, another day. And uh, that's how you build a homemade sulky, I guess. Not so great, but also I'm too damn tall and I didn't really factor that in. I could always just make an extra set of handlebars that bring everything up higher, but that's going to screw with the levers and everything. So, I'll just make one that's lower to the ground since it's easier. Or see how much the see how good the Walmart one works out for me. And this was the other option I had, which is a TV wall mount that I could have made a sulky out of. Could always use that. It has multiple pivots, three decent pivots on it, and a pretty decent amount of steel. Could actually probably turn that sideways and use that as suspension. Eh. Just another thought. And I cut those straight bars off those the deck on the John Deere, because why the hell not, right? And that's the piece of galvanized steel plate that I cut the bottom off of that I got at the scrapyard for probably like $7. I don't know why I kept these steering columns, but I think this one has gears in it. There. I may or may not use for another project. You never know when you like to build crap. So, there you have it. 
my first, first, first feeble attempt at making a sulky. <laughs> this was a wheel horse trailer at one point, wheel horse dump trailer. As you can see, I kind of just rough cut it, welded it, and then the bar that I welded on there because I didn't weld it great and I was in a rush and started downpouring, broke off was an exercise bike seat. And the reason I use exercise bike steel is because it's against the law to use crappy steel on exercise equipment because if it fails on somebody and somebody dies because of it, then the company gets a humongous lawsuit. So they have to use pretty decent steel. Like this. It's been sitting out in my yard for three years now. Some pretty thick stuff. Say a little over eighth inch. But it's been sitting out in my yard for three years and I like the fact that it has all these pulleys and crap on it. You never know when you're going to use those. And then you got this sweet old person lift that I use mainly in lifting up heavy machinery in my backyard because who the hell wants to do that, right? A few pumps. Because I got to start doing this engine swap here. This thing's rated for 400 plus pounds, so not really worried about the weight that it's lifting right now, especially since it's not lifting the entire thing. And that right there gives me enough space to get under here and pop these bolts for the motor. All four of them. One motor guard over there, one over here, one over, well, one motor, well, belt guard and bolt. That's all one piece. So I gotta use these bolts again or buy longer ones that thread into that craftsman block because I'm not sure. Yeah, that craftsman block has threads in it. So I might have to ream those threads out because apparently this one just all the bolts pop straight through. But it seems like the depth on the base of the block is about the same. I don't know if you can see that. And the shaft width is the same, so that's a double plus there. Only problem is with this easy mark, they, instead of putting a bolt through there at the bottom, they put a bolt through here and I can't get my fat ass hands in there to get it. And then there's this Allen key for the other one, but I'm pretty sure after I get this pulley off here, I should be able to get to the Allen key. Which is going to be my next week's project, because I'm freaking tired, and I work over 130 hours a week. And that mower's still sweet. Have a good one.